All right, yet another day on this spinning struggle rock. Give me your, give me your, give me your wigs. You don't know what to do with it. Give me your, give me your, give me your wig. Give me your, give me your, give me your wig. What's up, everybody? I am back and I'm ready to run my mouth. All right. <laughs> Speaking of running my mouth, make sure that you go to patreon.com slash Adrian Expression, where I ran my mouth for a whole ass hour on my latest podcast episode. Make sure you check it out. Let me know what you think. Patreon.com slash Adrian Expression. Now, there's just a few big topics that I want to highlight, and then we're going to move on about our business, and then I'll let you go, then I'll let you um, continue on with your day and continue on with your week. First of all, the DNC convention, where the fuck happened? Um, and I'm telling you right now, I just, I didn't really watch it. It was giving me very much, uh, saw some clips on social media. I think the more that I educate myself about what's going on in government, um, the more, you know, just the, the more aware of things I become, like the less excited I get to see any Democrats say anything to me. <laughs> like, just, like the less excited, I was just like, these girls over there performing, Billy Porter did something where I was just like, girl, I, I'm not understanding what's going on. <laughs> it was just, it was just like a lot. You know what? I thought about it a little bit more and I think another reason why their asses talking and gathering around doesn't really excite me and like at all anymore is you know, it's not 2008 anymore. Like I said, I'm, I'm becoming more aware of things. But also, it feels like when they have these big ass organized events and they have all this entertainment, it just seems like they playing they're playing a game. And you know what I mean? It's like Real shit is happening, real people are suffering, they're not listening, they want the status quo, and it's just like, it's just a game to them. It's just fun and games, we're gonna give cute speeches like we've been doing for the past how many generations, and we're just gonna, at the end of all this hype, is gonna be the same, same type of bullshit, you know? So I guess that's why it wasn't really invigorating for me. I guess y'all can tell me if you enjoyed it or not. Um, Power to all these centrists, we love it. <laughs> Like, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> talk about voting more than they talk about voter suppression. Nothing gets accomplished and we go back to the same shit. So, I don't know. I was not excited. So, Trump has done many silly things over the course of this week, uh, this year, his whole presidency, his whole life. But I just wanted to pick one that would be a little bit comical to lift our spirits up. Okay? Just scrolling down his Twitter feed, you could just pick anything. You know, so I decided to pick the tweet where he said that he does not want anybody to um, be buying any tires from Goodyear. That's what, and apparently some photo surfaced in Goodyear's training. They told the employees like, you can wear Black Lives Matter and all this other shit, but if you wear MAGA hats and if you wear Blue Lives Matter or anything like that, that's not allowed. That's not allowed on their premises. That's not allowed. Trump was mad as hell. It's just funny to me because it's like, he will be the first one talking about, oh, we need to buy, we need to prioritize American companies. We need to buy from American companies. Goodyear is a whole ass American company, right? Um, and apparently their stock went down and Japan's Michelin tires, their stock went up. <laughs> After he made that tweet, I thought that shit was so hilarious. And what's even funnier is that the Secret Service and all that shit, he, like, they you look at, look at this shit, they use Goodyear. <laughs> they use Goodyear tires. That shit made me cackle like a deep diaphragm stretching ass laugh. You see what I'm saying? That made me cackle. We need to just go ahead and skip the month of September so that Trump and his jack-o'-lantern ass face and head will fit better, will fit more cohesively in the environment that surround him. And we're gonna wrap up talking about politics and get to something else, but I just wanted to say that Mr. DeJoy, remember we was talking about DeJoy for the past like three, four videos, uh, Mr. Louis DeJoy said, hey, guess what? He, he released a statement saying, you know what, girls? You know, I'm not gonna do anything. All these changes that are going to be, you know, that people are talking about that's being made to USPS, we're just going to halt them until after the election. He said the Postal Service is ready today to handle whatever volume of election mail it receives this fall. We will deliver this nation's election mail on time and within our well-established service standards. Then he said the over 600,000 employed postal workers, the employees, are ready to do their sacred duty. So, you know, my response to this bullshit is I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, he still needs to, I think it was August 24th that he's gonna testify in front of the house. We'll see whatever bullshit he comes up with there. Um, but like I said, I believe it when I see it and what's most likely gonna happen is that my ass won't see shit. It's giving me very much fantastic for invisible woman tees. All right, y'all, let's just go ahead and talk about Trey Songs. So if you were, uh, you know, I'm just going to offer my condolences, offer my heartfelt empathy and sympathy uh, to anybody who works on Trey Songs PR, 
You know what I mean? Anybody who handles this image, this social media, anything like that, I really do feel for you because you woke up this morning, you saw that your client was trending and it was because uh, niggas was comparing him to R. Kelly. There was these OnlyFans girls named Selena Powell and Eliza, or Eliza, I think. Um, they were on a podcast just talking about, I think one of them, I think it was Eliza. She was essentially saying how Trey Songz was like holding her in a hotel room or something like that. Was holding her cell phone in her purse, wouldn't give it back to her. Told her to lay her ass down in the, in the tub and he started, you know, urinating on her ass. It was just... <laughs> It was a lot. It was a lot, right? So Trey Songz came out here like trying to expose people, I guess, trying to expose um, their conversations that she was having with him since she went up there talking. I guess she thought this was a way to get back at her, even though it did not, you know, disprove anything that she was saying. The only thing that he proved was that he likes for her white ass to call him him nigga. It was just like so weird. Put these people numbers out there so that his fans could go over there and call her and text her, FaceTime her. Now I'm gonna tell you how I know this shit is really, you know, suspect because. Because Trey Stones came out here talking about you will choose to believe what you want I've been focusing my energy and time on good things and I know the devil once I saw I know the devil it's one thing that niggas will do like they will call upon their fucking fairy godmothers and Santa Claus and tooth fairies in a minute bitch the niggas that got something to hide they will pull up a god in a minute they will be god oh god is testing me girl the consequences of your own actions testing you as well as <laughs> The devil is busy, girl. You know, your ass was busy, and and that's the reason why we're seeing the, the fruits of your labor. <laughs> Don't blame, Miss Mullins, do not blame no mythological creature on your shit. But once I saw that shit, he said, uh, I've been focusing on my energy and time and on good things. And I know the devil wants my soul more now than ever. I'm gonna keep my head high and push for it. If you holding me down in these moments, I appreciate that. I'm like, yeah, girl. Um, and like I said, this, if, if it was one instance, it would be like, okay, nigga, like we have to do some investigation. Bitch, I mean, Kiki Palmer was talking about it. Remember, she was talking about how um, he put her in his music video against her wishes. And she was talking about like sexual intimidation, sexual harassment. She said, remember she said, just cause you give someone food and alcohol and throw in a little sexual intimidation doesn't mean that they will buckle. Yet you still disrespected me as a young woman whom you've known since she was 12. You still defied my wishes and in turn showed your lack of respect for a brand that took me 14 years to build and put me in the video against my wishes. There have been multiple people saying, you know, multiple women saying some of the same things about Trey Songz. I mean, I'm gonna tell you now, when Trey Songz was leaning over Megan Thee Stallion, who was so obviously like, it was giving me cross-eyed drunk. <laughs> she was so obviously drunk and he was still shoving a bottle in her face and she was pushing it away from him like, nigga, what are you talking about? All of that shit is just not rubbing me the right way. And so when niggas act like they can't see this shit or just, they're just like, y'all are blowing this out of proportion. It's not that big of a deal. Um, women lie all the time. Like niggas will say that shit up until it reaches an R. Kelly level. And then they're just like, oh my God, how the fuck did this happen? Or, or they'll continue to defend his ass. So it's just like, really weird for people to be like okay well this shit is automatically not true it's not even worth us talking about it's like miss mamas <laughs> please please but like i said if you're wondering why he was trending that's what's happening like the girls because of this like podcast interview like they're pulling his receipt like they're pulling up everybody talking about their experiences with trace <laughs> like it's, what do you want us to do we didn't do that shit you better talk to your nigga that's trey you better talk to him you better talk to him before i do i'm gonna hurt his but the thing is rape culture as a whole in society okay but also in the music industry in hollywood that shit it needs to be addressed, girl. Cause Trey Songz ain't the only nigga that we side eyeing. Like, there are plenty of niggas, especially, you know what I mean? There are plenty of niggas, plenty of celebrities, and a lot of them get passes. It's crazy, a lot of them get passes. They continue to make their fucking music, make their art or whatever, and people are still up in arms about, oh my God, y'all are so, y'all are so mad. Y'all are gonna blow this out of proportion. Y'all trying to take a black man down. The thing is that even if we talk about these things, even if we uncover these things, it's it might not even take that nigga down. It's not gonna take no niggas down. So it's like, y'all are really mad for no reason. It's crazy, it's crazy, but. Yeah, like I said, if you're wondering, that's why he's trending. Good luck to Damage Control and his PR agents and everything. I don't fuck around with no glue or anything like that, but it's looking like a really sticky situation. <laughs> so apparently people were spreading this shit on social media that, you know, Megan Thee Stallion, she healed so quickly. Um, she claimed she was shot in the foot. Um, I don't know, she must be lying, can't believe this shit. So I guess the reason why I'm talking about Megan Thee Stallion so much is just because I, I've seen 
her like so much of her journey and I've seen how the public approached her when she was starting to now how a lot a lot of people are approaching her when she's at the status that she's at right now. But in general, I just see how y'all treat black women, period, right? People are saying, oh, Megan Thee Stallion is lying. She didn't really get shot. She out here twerking and moving around and partying with people and Asian doll and everything. She must not, it must not have been that bad or she must not have been shot, period. So Megan Thee Stallion went up onto Instagram and she posted pictures of her injuries on her feet. And first of all, it's, it's even, it's crazy as hell that someone feels like they have to do that or, or would be compelled to do that because of the way y'all treat motherfuckers. But I knew in my heart that even after she posted that shit, there are gonna still be people act like, be like, well, girl, that it don't really look like a bullet wound. It don't really look like a gunshot wound, girl. It's like, bitch, do you want to bring Megan to your, your house or your room, you know, your apartment, and sit her down and somebody, or lay her ass down, get a magnifying glass and in inspect her goddamn feet? Like, what, what do y'all wanna do? <laughs> Hack Megan's uh, health records so you can examine exactly what the fuck went on? This is what she said on Instagram. What, have, what I have learned about a majority of people on social media is y'all like to hear bad news before good news. A lie spreads quicker than the truth and y'all be really believing the shit y'all make up. I got hit at the back of my feet because when I got shot, I was walking away facing the back. Why would I lie about getting shot? Why are y'all so upset that I don't want to be in the bed sad? Why are y'all upset that I can walk? I got stitches out my feet like two weeks ago and I was ready to go celebrate uh, with Ask Pussy going number one. I usually don't address internet bullshit, but y'all people are so sick. God was really watching over me. I'm healing so well. Sorry I'm not as sad and miserable as a lot of y'all, but I'm going to keep being Megan the motherfucker stallion that's on period i view it as similar to how they treated her after the news hit that her mother had passed away right if she wasn't on social media crying her eyes out or just you know sitting in the dark depressed every damn day it was like that wasn't enough for y'all it's crazy though because it's like if black women show strength it's almost like you're doing too much or you're being manipulative, you're being angry, they dehumanize you, they act like you don't have emotions but if they show emotion the motherfuckers gonna clown their ass Get your ass back in the studio. What you on here on social media? I, I can't believe she would put all her business. She need to grieve in private. Could you imagine? Like, oh, why she always crying about being shot all the time on social media? She need to keep that shit private. She need to keep that shit between her and her doctor. We don't need to be seeing all this shit all the time. Every time, every day she wake up, she talking about being shot, being shot. It's like, you niggas get shot one time. You niggas get shot at, okay? And for the next 10 albums, for the next 15 albums, we hearing the same shit. Like, goddamn. Your whole personality based off of you being shot, niggas. Like, what do y'all want? What do y'all want? But anyway, I can't believe that these recent weeks have been the first time that I've really understood or really found out what's going on with Britney Spears. And the fact that this hashtag Free Britney is all about how she's in this really oppressive ass conservatorship. A lot of Britney Spears fans have been spreading information around. They've been talking about how um, they feel that Britney is being taken advantage of by her by her father. I want to read this from the LA Times. Since 2008, when she was twice committed to a psychiatric ward, the pop star has been under the legal guardianship of her father lawyers and care and a care manager the rare legal arrangement meant to protect individuals who are unable to care for themselves allows the elder spare so allows her father to negotiate on his daughter's behalf um, in business sell her property and control who she can see also along with more controls all of her purchases are logged in a spending report that is sent to the court on an annual basis according to law experts it is unusual for someone as young and productive as britney spears to be in a probate conservatorship typically used to protect the old infirm and mentally disabled they are intended for people who are not likely to get better and often remain in effect until the person dies so what's happening now is britney spears is trying to i think the case is today i'm not sure but britney spears and her lawyer they're trying to remove her father from this situation so in the documents the lawyer says britney strongly prefers keeping jody montgomery in the position um, who has been assigned as a temporary conservator for nearly a year now. At this point, she says she wants to put her in that role permanently. So it's just a, a lot of the fans, like I said, have been saying that her father has been just using her for money, like keeping her under these strict, tight controls. I think he can even control um, or she doesn't have control over whether or not she makes music or whether or not she tours, if I'm understanding it correctly. So her fans are just like, girl, let this woman out of this shit. <laughs> like, what the fuck? 
Um, I think it's especially sad because if you look at Britney's overall life, it's like, God damn, fame will really fuck someone's mind up, especially especially given how we weren't having these types of conversation or people weren't having these types of conversations about mental health, especially back then when, when all of that shit was going on. So you look at her life, you know, the fame will fuck you up. And then after that, your whole life after that is being controlled by a person who people are saying is just doing this shit for coin, like doing this shit for your coin. That is like, it, it, girl, that is terrifying. It's just crazy because I think about like, you know, those moments in the paparazzi or those moments in pop culture where it was all about Britney shaving her head and Britney's going crazy. And I think about how like, of course there are still people who would make fun of her and drag the shit out of her. But I think she would have been handled with more care. Like the situation would be, would have been handled with more care if it was, a, if it, that shit happened around this time than when it actually did, you know? So just looking over her life, it's like, girl, give, give the girl a break, god damn. But yeah, I didn't know till recently that she could not even do, she could not even make basic decisions for her own self. You know, she can't get married without her father's permission or without, you know, as long as she's in the conservatorship, like she cannot do something like that. That's crazy to not have that control over your life. This type of conservatorship or this type of arrangement is was for people who don't have the capacities that Britney clearly does. Like, So yeah, if you're wondering what the free Britney hashtag was, that's kind of a very basic overview of it. I would suggest you look it up because there's definitely more um in there but yeah i think that's all i want to run my mouth about thank you so much for watching make sure like i said you check out patreon.com slash adrian expression i love you all so much and make sure that you have a good goddamn evening